You enter a dark, mysterious room. There's an ominous mirror centered on the back wall, magical smoke pouring out of it. Really interesting magical smoke and lovely fog on the floor that you can learn all about in my previous video. You notice a slight glow. Is that a reflection? No, nothing back here that seems important. Is it inside the mirror? How can this be? You go for a closer look. Ow, wait, it's just a late Halloween episode. <laughs> welcome, welcome to this spooky episode. Uh, if you're interested in the environment art here, that's all from a free package on the Unity Asset Store. Link will be in the description. And if you're after the particles, you'll need to check my previous video for that. Uh, all we're going to focus on today is the mirror and the monster that comes at you the closer you get. And in the spirit of Halloween, this will all be available for free over on my Patreon. So let's just crack on. We'll start by making ourselves a new lit shader graph. I'm using URP for this, but you know, try it out on HTRP and let me know if it's any different. Make sure to name it something scary, otherwise none of this will work. Open up the shader and let's get some initial values in here to make it look like a mirror. So set the base color to white and smoothness and metallic to one. Save that and then right click the shader and create a material from it. Assign it to the mirror and behold, no monster. We're safe. Obviously this is still reflecting the reflection probe that I baked from the environment. So for you, obviously the mirror is just going to reflect whatever static objects you had in your scene. But let's go ahead and add a monster into this. So make yourself a texture 2D property, then put that in and hook it up to a sample texture 2D node. If we just stuck that right into the base color as is and then assign the texture. Ah, wait, let me drop the metallic value here so we can actually see this thing. You shouldn't be surprised at what we get, which is just the texture of a monster mapped to the mirror. Not very spooky at all, so where's the magic? Well, that's partly in a parallax node, which I'll hook into the UV slot here and also create a temporary float to give you an idea of what's going on. As we push this number up, it starts pushing the texture back and uh oh, so many monsters. We can sort that out by going to the texture file itself and changing the wrap mode from repeat to clamp and then apply. So there's that part. The monster is in, but he's not fading in or out. He's not getting bigger or smaller. There's just nothing special happening yet. So let's get the fading sorted first. And for that, we're not going to be using any sort of alpha because that would also alpha out parts of the mirror, which is not good. Instead, we essentially want to just blend between this monster image and the default mirror setup based on our distance. So let's get the mirror color back in here as a property. I'll set mine to white by default. And put this in and add it to the top slot of a lerp node and put the output from the monster texture into the middle slot. We now have the two items that we want to blend and now we just need a way to blend them. And for that, like I said, it's going to be based on distance. So we'll get the camera position, which is the player, and the object position, which is the mirror in this case. And then we just subtract them and chuck in a length node. The output of this will be our distance. So we need a way to set the start and end distances. And we do that with smooth step. And then just create yourself two new float properties, one for start, and one for end. Keep in mind that the start value here is usually higher than the end. Like if I set this to five, that means I want to start seeing the monster at you know five units away. So just hook all of that up and feed this into the T or the mask slot of the lerp node. Set that as your new base color and give it a spin. So it's sort of working. We can see this a bit easier by changing the mirror tint color and then just play with the start and n values just to find something that works for you you know whatever distance you want this to fade by and so now if i set this back to white and then on the shader set the metallic back to one we now have the mirror restoring back to its proper state when we're far enough away but the monster has become impossible to see which for some horror movies works really well but it's not going to cut it for this tutorial so let's address that next We'll need to use the emissive slot to fix this. 
And we of course want to use the monster texture that we already have and also the fade logic that we've made. We will need a new lerp node though, because we need to blend it to black, which for emission means nothing. Invisible. Spooky. So plug the existing texture into the B slot of the lerp, then feed the distance fade logic into the T slot, and that's all. Stick it in emission and go check it out. If you did want to exclude the black background of the monster texture, you could just add its own alpha into the chain. There's probably other ways to do this, but my smooth brain went with another lerp for the alpha masking, and then just one minus the result. Then feed that into the lerp that we already had from before. Up to you. Personally, I really like how the entire thing just darkens as we get closer, so I'll keep mine simple. We still don't have the glowing facial features yet though, the ones that first appear and try to draw the player in. We need this to happen in the emissive channel, of course. We do have a texture file specifically for this, and again, I just want to say that all of this is free for the taking over on my Patreon. So go ahead and create a new Texture2D property, hook it into the usual sample Texture2D node, and because it's just a grayscale image, we will want to multiply this with a color. I'll set the default of this to orange, and we also want to change its mode over to HDR. I'll give it an intensity of 5 to begin with. We can always tweak it on the material later, but it's always nice to have some default workable values. Let's convert this into a property, give it a different name if you want, then hook it all up and just add it together with the existing monster texture, and feed the result of that into the loop's B slot. This is getting a little bit spaghetti forgetty here, so I'll try to tidy it up some. And if you didn't already know, you can click twice on a connection line to add in this nice splitter thing, which helps a bit, and I do mean a bit, with reducing visual clutter. We also need to feed the same parallax UVs into this new emiss texture, because if we didn't, then it would just be stuck on the mirror. You'll want to do this for any new textures that you add in. Don't forget to assign the texture. We don't want a heavenly portal after all. We want scary monster. And there we go. With the glow being so strong, it pops before the rest of this image, which is technically still there. It's just faded enough that we can't see it. Now's also a good time to mention that you may have noticed I have a height map included in the textures. If you did want to play around with this for some extra depth, you'll want to use the parallax occlusion mapping node, not the regular parallax mapping node. It wasn't necessary for the effect that I wanted, but it's pretty cool to see, unless you push it too far and then it just gets weird. But weird can be scary too, so, you know, win-win. The last thing to tackle is we need the monster to appear further away and then come toward us as we're also moving toward it. And if you remember from the beginning when I made the temporary float to show you the parallax offset, well, that's all this effect will be. We're just going to manipulate this offset with the same distance logic that we already have. So let's say goodbye to the float that we've been using as an example, and instead we'll use the distance logic. But the thing with this is we're not gonna be able to use the start and end numbers directly here. These are just the values that will return either a positive or a negative, depending on whether or not we meet the distance criteria. This has always been the case, but we've been looping the value with colors or textures. So I really just want to drive this point home. It's the positive and the negative, or the black and the white, that we're interested in. We use that information in the loop. So if something is positive, do a thing. And if it's negative, do a different thing. So let's add a new loop using the distance check once more in the T slot. And then we'll need two new floats for monster far and monster close. Then we'll plug those into the loop and feed the result into the amplitude slot on our parallax node. And that's it, so now you can go to your material and mess with the values until it's about how you want it to be. And if you don't like the idea of having values like 7000 plus in your material, you can always come back and multiply that float by, I don't know, something like 5 or whatever. This gives you the same results, but now your material values don't look insane. And that will be all for this video. I will try to do the Christmas one on time, but uh, until then, I thank you as always for watching. Leave a like or a comment if you had a good time, and if you didn't, well, that sucks for you, and I'm sorry. See you in the next one.